you finally found the diet that heals your gut, trims your waist, and clears your brain fog. But then, bam, your doctor calls, your cholesterol is high, and suddenly your low-carb glow turns into LDL panic. Today we're answering the million dollar question, high cholesterol on carnivore keto and should you be worried? Spoiler alert, not all LDL is created equal. And no, a prescription pad isn't always the answer. And before we dive in, hi, I'm Dr. Tony Hampton, board certified obesity doc, lover of ribeyes, and your root cause metabolic guide. Drop a comment below and let me know. Have you been told your cholesterol is high on keto or carnivore? Let's crowdsource the truth because big pharma and big food certainly won't. Let's rewind. You fix your diet, your blood sugar drops, your energy soars, and yet your LDL goes up. Now your doctor wants to put you on a statin, despite the fact that you're the healthiest you've felt in years. What gives? This moment is where I've seen so many patients lose faith. They're stuck between metabolic healing and a cholesterol myth stuck in 1994. Let's bust it down. The old model. If you eat fat, you'll raise your cholesterol, clog arteries, and that'll lead to heart attacks. Simple, scary, wrong. The updated reality. Cholesterol is essential for hormone production, brain function, and cellular repair. 80% of it is made by your liver. Dietary cholesterol has very little impact for most people. So why does LDL sometimes go up on carnivore or keto? Because you're mobilizing fat, not creating disease. If your doctor is only looking at total cholesterol or LDL cholesterol, they're using a blurry snapshot when they could have a high definition scan. Here's what you actually want to look at. APO B to A ratio, the number of aterogenic particles, strongest predictor of risk. LDLP, which is your LDL particle count. It's also called an NMR test, more predictive than the LDL cholesterol. Triglyceride to HDL ratio, aim for a value less than two. A strong proxy for insulin sensitivity. Lipoprotein small particle A, a genetic risk marker. Good to know. Fasting insulin, 6.7 times more predictor of a future heart attack than an LDL cholesterol. And of course, a coronary artery calcium score test measures actual plaque buildup and is direct evidence. Let me say it loud for people in the back. You do not die from an LDL number. You die from unstable plaque. And if your inflammation is low, insulin is optimal, and CAC score is zero, your risk may be very low, even with elevated LDL. Now let's dig into the physiology. You're eating more saturated fat. Your body becomes fat adapted, and your liver starts pumping out more LDL particles to shuttle fat for fuel, especially in lean, insulin-sensitive people. This is called lean mass hyperresponders, LMHR. Traits for lean mass hyperresponders include low triglycerides, high HDL, very high LDL, excellent metabolic health. Does this pattern automatically equal high risk? Not according to recent observational data. In fact, many lean mass hyperresponders have zero plaque on coronary CT scans. But here's the kicker. This profile looks scary to a conventional doc. They're trained to lower the number not understand the context. And let me pause for a second. If this is resonating, please like and subscribe. That lets YouTube know this is the kind of metabolic truth you want more of. Let's be honest. We've been blaming the body's firefighters, cholesterol, instead of the arsonists, inflammation plus insulin resistance. It's not high LDL alone. It's oxidized LDL trapped in inflamed endothelium. And guess what fuels that fire? Sugar, seed oils, processed carbs, chronic stress, poor sleep, lack of movement. Meanwhile, carnivore lowers nearly all of these risk factors. It removes the root causes, not just masks the symptoms. Okay, let's be real. Sometimes elevated cholesterol is a concern. Red flags include an abnormal APOB to A ratio, high LDL small particles and inflammation markers that are elevated like high sensitivity C reactive protein or ferritin, family history of early heart disease, elevated lipoprotein small particle A, a rising CAC score over time. This is where contextual medicine matters. You don't throw a statin at every LDL number. You treat the patient, not just the lab. Here's what I tell my patients. Step one, ask for advanced lipid testing, APO B to A ratio, LDL particle test, 
triglyceride to HDL ratio test. Step two, check insulin markers like a fasting insulin, a A1C, HOMA IR, and inflammatory markers like a set rate, high sensitivity C-reactive protein, or an homocysteine. Step three, ask for a CAC score if you're over 30. Step four, share the results respectfully. The goal is collaboration, not confrontation. And if your doctor still says, we just need to get that number down, speaking of the LDL, get a second opinion or a metabolically trained provider. You deserve root cause care or order your own labs with Own Your Own Labs. Let me tell you about Marcus, a 52-year-old police officer who switched to carnivore. He dropped 60 pounds, his A1C fell from 6.4 to 5.1, triglycerides plummeted, energy through the roof, but his LDL jumped from 120 to 220. His doctor freaked out, but his CAC score, zero. His ApoB to A ratio, normal. Inflammation, based on the markers, gone. That man is not sick. He's thriving. And I see this every week in my clinic. So should you worry? Not necessarily. Not if your metabolic health is improving. Not if your advanced markers are optimal. Not if you feel better than ever. Remember, we're not treating a lab number. We're restoring function, reducing risk, healing from the inside out. Cholesterol isn't the enemy. Metabolic dysfunction is. Now it's your turn. Comment below. What have you seen in your own cholesterol journey? Have you pushed back on the statin pressure or are you still unsure where you stand? Hit like, share this with a friend who's worried about their cholesterol. And if you want more no-nonsense metabolic truth bombs like this, keep watching because I got a full playlist on heart health, insulin, and the carnivore diet that'll blow your mind. And check out the video right here on the screen where the American Heart Association finally endorses low-carb and keto diets. Stay curious, stay courageous, and remember, healing isn't just possible, it's your birthright. I'll see you in the next video.